Hey everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and today's video is another episode of our e-commerce mini series. Now for the first video of this part in the series, I showed you guys how to design your custom product page. However, I am not very good at code. So we're bringing on Ethan from the WixWiz YouTube channel. Of course, I'm gonna leave the link to his channel in the description below. I really ask that you guys go subscribe to his channel. He is a Velo genius. But Ethan is gonna be here for the next several episodes in this series to help bring that design that I made to life. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass the baton over to Ethan and he's gonna show you how it's done. So now that we've finished building out most of our custom product page from displaying the product data all the way till adding the product to cart, I wanna talk about an additional thing that we can add to a custom product page. And this is something that you can also add to your native Wix product pages. So it doesn't necessarily require all the customizations that we've done until now. And that is to add additional info under the main product page. And the way we're gonna be doing this is by adding additional data collections, which have info about the products that we couldn't really add through the product dashboard. And we're gonna show two examples of how we can add this additional info to the product page based on the product that we're displaying. So we're gonna show one basic example down over here, and this is just gonna be a highlighted testimonial with the testimonial giver's name. And we're also going to show a more sophisticated option where we have different features among all of our products and some of the products need to show some of the features. So let's hop in and see how we're gonna accomplish that. So I'm gonna start off with the simple example. And the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is to set up our data collection. So that for that, you'll wanna go over here to the CMS. And once you're in the CMS, you'll go to your collections and I've already set up two data collections over here, or more like Ryan set up one and I set up the other. And the one we're gonna be starting with is this product additional info, and you can call the collection uh, whatever you want, of course. And what I've done here is I've set up a very simple collection with the uh, name of the testimonial giver and their testimonial. And we're going to need to add one more field to this collection, and that is the field that's going to essentially connect between this custom info that I've added to the collection and the actual products from the Wix stores products collection. So in order to do that, I'm gonna head over here to add field and I'm going to choose a multi-reference field. Uh, you could also technically choose a reference field. I personally like to use multi-reference fields because I feel like it gives more flexibility and the usage is very similar. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose this field type and then we need to give this name uh, this field a name so I'm just going to call it product and I'm going to select a collection over here and I'm going to scroll down until I find the Wix stores products collection okay and I'm going to go ahead and select that and I'm going to click save down over here. Now that we've added that in, you'll see that if you go ahead and just click inside one of these, you have the option to add a reference. And here there's essentially a drop down with all of our different products from the Wix stores. So I can just go ahead and select one of these products and then go ahead and just associate each of these different uh, testimonials with a specific product that I want this testimonial to show for. And since we have a multi-reference field, you can technically also display some of these with multiple products, and that's gonna be the more advanced situation which I'm gonna show you later on. So let me just go ahead and finish associating these with products. Awesome. So now that we've created the association between our testimonials and the products, we can head over to our IDE in order to start coding out the logic that will display a specific testimonial for a specific product. So over here inside of the Wix IDE, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll all the way down and I'm going to create a brand new function here under all of the code that we've already written for our custom product page. And the function that I'm going to write over here, so let's have an asynchronous function. And the reason I'm creating an asynchronous function is because I want to be able to query data with this function. And the name of the function, I will call it populate testimonial. 
Good luck to me for spelling testimonial right every time. And what we're going to do here is we're essentially going to be doing a query on the new collection that we created. Uh, but we're going to be doing this query based on it having the ID of the current product from this product page inside of the product field. So the first thing I'm going to need to have here is the product ID. And then we can have from the global variable that we store all the way up top over here, as long as we call this function after we get the product data. So let me go ahead and just grab that product ID. So I'll say const product ID equals to product dot ID. And the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to query Wix data. And I can say here const additional info query result equals two, and then we'll have await Wix data. And I see here that I haven't imported Wix data yet. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go right up here to the top of the page. And over here with the rest of my imports, I'm just going to go ahead and import Wix data. So let's do import Wix data from Wix data. Awesome. So now that we've have we have that import over there, you can see that down over here, uh, we don't have any issues uh, with kind of squiggly red lines, which is always a good sign. And here we're going to run a query. And we're going to be querying the collection that we just created. So I'm going to need to go to the editor to find the name of that collection. Uh, but before we do that, I'll just say that we're going to be saying has some. And then we're going to need the field here, which is going to be probably product. And here we're going to have the product ID. And then we're going to call find. So let me hop over to the editor now. And I'm going to take a peek at two things. So the first thing is uh, if I go over here to code and then I'm going to go to databases over here and I'm going to find my product additional info collection. And we can see here. So if I copy the collection ID from right over here, I can go back into my IDE and just paste that right over here. So let me go ahead and paste that in. So here we have the ID now, and I can also copy the name of this field just in case, you know, sometimes I call it product, sometimes products, who knows what it's called, always worth double checking. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that from over there and paste this right over here. Awesome. So now our query is essentially complete. And uh, what we can do is we can extract the item which match the query. And I'm going to be assuming here that we only have one item that should match a specific product ID. So I'm going to say const additional info equals to additional info query result dot items and zero. Okay, so now we should have an object with that testimonial and with the name. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign each of those values to the elements uh, inside of the editor. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just if you haven't done so already, you're going to want to go ahead and name these two elements. So you could see here that I named this one testimonial text and this one I named testimonial giver text. OK, so that's what we're going to select here inside of the IDE. So let me select each of those elements. So here we have tests. Text. Yay, <laughs> I spelled it right. Dot text. And we're also going to have the, uh, sorry, the testimonial testimonial giver text dot text. Okay. And these are going to be. Uh, populated with the information from additional info. So I could just say here additional info dot testimonial. And I can say here additional info dot name. And again, if you're not sure what you named each of those having a little uh, 
trouble here with the autocorrect. Okay, maybe it's an issue to give it dot name. Okay, oh, sorry. Okay, my bad. Equals to additional info dot name. Sorry, my brain glitched out there. Okay, so uh, if again, you don't remember the names of these fields, then you can head back into the editor. And just like we did before, uh, sorry, head into the code panel databases, and just double check here. So here it's testimonial. And here it's name. Okay, you can see these two over here. Uh, so now that we've done that, we're pretty much uh, done here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a console log here just to say, just to see what we get back here from additional info. So additional info, and I'll have here additional info, and obviously console.log and not just console. Awesome. And last but not least, we have to remember to actually call this function. So let me grab this over here. And it seems obvious, but I seem to forget it quite often. Uh, and then we'll go right over here. So I'll do it right after we populate the options. I'll populate the testimonial. Okay, so that's looking good, uh, pretty much in terms of code. And now we can head over to the editor and see if this is working uh, in preview mode. Okay, so here I am back in the editor in preview mode. And as you can see, I'm currently in product number 10. And this is one of the products that we set up a custom testimonial for, which you can see is being displayed over here. And if I switch, let's say to 11, which is also a product that we set up a testimonial for, then hopefully you should see the testimonial change. And here you can see the testimonial that's specific to product 11. Uh, and the beauty of this is that we really didn't need to have a custom product page in order to do this. We could have totally added a new section inside of the regular native Wix product page and just gotten the product ID using the API for get product page. Okay, so it's really, uh, and if you could just type that in Google and I'm sure you'll find the API reference in order to do that. Um, and so this is really something that's very versatile and it doesn't require all the customizations that we've done until now but we can definitely do it with all the customizations that we've done until now. So now that we've shown the basic example, I'm gonna go ahead and show one more slightly more advanced use case. So for this slightly more advanced use case, we also set up a collection here inside of the CMS, and this collection is the product features collection. And the way that this collection works is that we have different product features, and each feature has a title, it has an icon and it has a description. And each of these features is associated with multiple products. Okay, so not only one product, but with multiple products over here, also using a multi-reference field. And the idea is that when we reach a page with any one of these products, we're gonna wanna get all the features that are associated with that product. So it could be multiple features from within this collection and we're gonna be displaying them over here inside of a repeater. And the reason this is set up as with a repeater is because we don't know how many features we're gonna have for a specific collection. So we want to be versatile and be able to display one or two or three or none or four, uh, depending on how many features we actually find from that query. So now that we have a basic understanding of how that works, let's head into the IDE and start to code it. So here I am back in the IDE, and I'm gonna be creating a new function right under the testimonials function that we created earlier. And this is also going to be an asynchronous function, and I'll call it populate product features. And the code that we're gonna start with initially is gonna be super similar to the code that we wrote for the testimonials. So I'm actually going to use that code as a starting point for this new function, even though a lot of people will say copying code is a no-go. I like to do it often. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy all the code that we have here uh, inside of this function over here. And I'm gonna paste it inside of our new populate product features function. And now let's talk about what the changes are that we need to make. So first of all, we're going to need to change this uh, name of the, I don't know if you could see it over here, but yeah, the name of the collection that we're querying. And we may also need to change the name of the field. But the logic here is essentially the same because we're querying a collection for 
all of the items that have some of that product ID. The only difference here is that in this case, it is not going to be only one item. So we're not going to select zero here, but we're going to want to deal with all of the items that we get back. Okay, so let me go ahead and just double check the name of the or the ID of the collection. So I'm going to go over here, databases, and right over here. So we can see that product here is essentially called the same. It's called product. And uh, in terms of the ID, I'm just going to go ahead, uh, the collection ID, I'm going to go ahead and copy it from right over here. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it right over here. Uh, we could also change some of the naming here. So instead of additional info query, it'll be, let's say, features query result. And then we can change this as well to features and features features query result. OK, so now that we've gotten back uh, all of our features, we're going to want to pass these features into our repeater. But before we do that, we want to set up the on item ready for the repeater so that the repeater knows what to do once it gets data from our uh, from in general, once it gets data. Uh, so let me go ahead, we can get rid of these lines over here. And I'm going to create the on item ready function for the repeater. And I call this repeater product features repeater. And I'm going to say dot on item ready. And this is something that we've done a few times in this series already. So you should be really pros at it. And just watch how I make a mistake now. Uh, and uh, we can select each item in the repeater. So one item that we have here is the uh, feature. I'm going to need to go back and double check what I named all these things. Uh, so let me go over here. So we have the product feature icon. We have the product feature title. And we have the product feature text. Okay, let's see if I can remember all that. So we have over here, product feature title dot text. And I can copy over this line. And let me paste it twice. And we have the product feature text. And we have the product feature icon which is going to be dot source over here. Okay, and now I just need to have each of these going to be item data dot something. Okay, and that thing is going to be the name of the field from our new collection. So let me go ahead and double check that as well. I'm just going to open this up. And so title is the field title icon is the field icon. And here description description is just going to be the text. Um, so let's go over here and change that. So this is going to be title, whoops, title, and this is going to be description, and this is going to be icon. Okay, in an ideal world, I would go back and change this to also be description, but for the sake of, of your time, I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, and now that we've set up the on item ready, what we can do is we can just send in the data to the repeater. So let me select the repeater uh, product features repeater dot data equals to features. And last but not least, we'll want to remember to actually call this function. So I'm going to grab this function right over here. And I'll paste it right under our populate testimonial function. OK, and now that we've done all that, we can head back into the editor into preview mode and see if this is actually working. So here I am back in the editor in preview mode. And as you can see here that for the additional details, uh, we're no longer seeing the regular repeater text, but we're actually seeing different features and also different icons you can see over here uh, for each of the features. And if I go ahead and I switch up here to a different product, so let's say to product 11, uh, then we should see this cruelty free sustainability and essential and vegan, I think it was. Yeah, so you see it changed. So we still have sustainable packaging. But now this is most popular, and it's clean ingredients. 
So this is a really good solution if you have a lot of products that share different features and you want to be able to efficiently kind of set up all those features in one place and display them appropriately for the products that have those associated features. Um, and that's uh, what we're going to be showing for today. And again, this is something that's super useful and can be used also with a custom product page, but also with the native Wix product page, which makes it all the more powerful. Uh, and I hope you enjoy it and go ahead and use it on your site. But that's basically going to wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more Wix and Wix Studio content coming out really soon. Again, I want to give a special shout out to Aton from the WixWiz YouTube channel. This series would not be possible without him, so I'm really appreciative for him. But thank you again for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.